So nearby in Isha, today's video is sponsored um, by our frequent contributor, The Wall Man, who wants me to open up this mysterious package he sent to the office at the end of the video. So you have no idea? Uh, no idea what's in here, so if you want to know what's in here, stick around to the end. Before that, since we're currently in kit mode, the best sound. The best sound, so. You might be thinking, what's so f***ed about getting like a, a Coke Zero? What's so f***ed about that? So, well, oh yeah, there we go. We're back to it, folks. You can tell we've not done it in a while, because that's full. That's a full bottle of vodka right there. Ah, cheers. So here at Fact Theme, we don't think it's going to surprise anybody listening that women have spent the majority of history being s***ed on from a great height by weird, insecure men. Do you agree with that, Nisha? Yes. Yes, as a member of the fairer sex, would you agree that you are very often not given a fair shake due to the fact you are a woman? Well, we could talk about the first time I appeared on the channel. Yes. Like, I was just a voice. Off talking, camera. Talking in the background, you know, having a conversation with my friend. Yep. And people got mad about that. A minor, yet nonetheless darkly fascinating example of this comes from the world of virtuoso instrumentalists. And specifically, the world of orchestras, where women have to audition behind a big curtain wearing no shoes just to get the same chance as a man. That's just bizarre. Like, they shouldn't need to... You know, it doesn't matter. That's the thing. It does. <laughs> like, that's it. We don't think it matters, but it really does matter to a lot of weird men out there. And it's always fucking men. And I can't think of just anything that is more fragile than the male ego. And a phrase I heard from a mutual friend of ours... Um, when they were like, you know, going on Tinder trying to complete it, um, and they gone on a few dates with a few guys, and I asked them, so how's it going? And they just sighed and said, do you know when you speak to a guy and you can just tell that he doesn't have a personality, he just has three subreddits and a YouTube channel that he quotes, and I went, I know exactly the kind of guy. Yeah, you mentioned having to audition at an orchestra. Do you have an example of how bad it actually got? Yes, I think nothing sums up how poor opportunities for female instrumentalists were um, in orchestras. More than the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra, where they had, I think, up until like 1997, um, like one woman. Really? Yes. And uh, the excuses from the Vienna uh, Philharmonic Orchestra range from the sadly predictable, extremely misogynistic, to the frankly hilarious. My favorite being a guy who said, well, I have no problem with women uh, being a part of the orchestra as long as they can prove that they are as skilled as the men in an audition seemingly blissfully unaware that at that point in time, the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra did not allow women to audition. Oh. Yeah, so he stood there saying, well, I've no problem. If women want to audition and they're as good as the men, they can take part. Which but they're not allowed. Women weren't allowed, yeah. But he sat there and said that in an interview and thought there was nothing wrong with it. For God's sake. Exactly. And just in case you weren't pissed off enough folks at home, which we point out that the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra had an unofficial rule um, for pretty much the entirety of its existence, up until near enough the modern day, that white people were the only people are also allowed to audition. You're kidding. Yeah. You're kidding. So they also didn't allow anyone who wasn't white to oh audition. Oh my god. And this was a policy up until the um, early 2000s. And that is one, admittedly, very extreme example from a very traditional orchestral ensemble. But for women around the world, the stories were no different. And I don't think anything sums up how poor opportunities for women were, more than the fact that most of the places where orchestras would, you know, practice and train did not have female changing facilities. Right? They literally didn't even have a place for women to go to the toilet. Yeah, the fact that they didn't even have toilets for women mm -hmm. just proves that they didn't expect women to be there. Yeah, but they would say, like, we have no problem with women being a part of this. You know, we're very open to women taking part. But they don't accommodate to yes. them, so... they don't accommodate women at all. They're just saying it. <laughs> and there are stories of the few women that did manage to get accepted um, while trying twice as hard as the men, something we'll get to in a moment, um, they would have to get changed in the hallway. Oh, no. Or they would have to, like, you know, get changed in the male changing rooms, which is probably, you know, I'm guessing there's a lot of women out there that, that would make them uncomfortable, getting changed in front of a bunch of weird, like, old men. Just a bit, yeah. Who are, like, horribly sexist and, like, you know, deem you lesser just because of your gender. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of that story, I think it was uh, Blizzard Entertainment, where they were, like, outward as being, like, horribly misogynistic internally. And a story that I've read, and I'm like, I can't believe that someone didn't get, like, punched for this. And it's like, oh, they set up, like, you know, a room for women to go um, uh, pump breast milk. And they didn't put a lock on the door, and men would walk in and watch women pump breast milk, and they wouldn't leave. And there are stories from women, like, get the fuck That's out, disgusting. and the men are like, 
Why? And they would complain and they would complain to HR and get told well, what do you want to do about it. It's like, put a fucking oh lock on the door. God. And every time stories like this come up, you always get, and it, as I said, it's always men going like, well, it's not all men. I'm reminded of like the best tweet I saw about that. Of like, yeah, we know it's not all men. Like, you know, we're just speaking generally at this point. And the fact that you can't see that and want to muddy the water by well, it's not all men. So, well, no. We know it's not, but we try to have a discussion about the fact that it's not quite a lot of men to the point where this is like, you know, a near universally um, observed phenomenon. And I don't think there's a single woman out there who does not have at least one story about, like, you know, being treated differently for the gender by a man. And if there are any men out there like, well, I've never heard these stories, that's probably part of the problem. And if you can't find a single woman in your life that you can trust enough to have this conversation with, you're part of the problem. It's like those um, messages you get when you get on Tinder and mm -hmm. stuff like that, where you see the like screenshots of men like trying on with women, and the women say no, and then them turn around calling them a whore and yep. stuff like that. It's like, well, can you see why people don't want to come out with you? Yeah. <laughs> because you're talking to women like this, even though we're just saying no. Yep. You're allowed to say no. Yes, you are. And it's incredibly frustrating in the world of like you know elites, virtuoso instrumentalists. It was a real rough time for women for many years, and. The only real position they were ever allowed to audition for was harpist, because harpist was traditionally seen as a woman's instrument. This is just like one minor example of one very niche industry, but it's something you can observe the world over. Look, it's not a niche industry, it's a me industry. No, no. <laughs> well, oddly enough, speaking of music and niche, you've worked with a female led band out in Cyteria. Yeah. They're like, no, they kick all kinds of ass. Mm -hmm. And like a couple of my favourite bands are led by women. You've got like, obviously Paramore's the obvious one. Like Hayley fucking Williams, let's go. Then you've got like from my other favourite band, Battle Beast, which is just like this power metal band led by this woman, and she can fucking wail. She is awesome. But hey Monday, I don't know if you've heard of Hey Monday. Yes. They sound quite similar to Paramore, I think. Yeah, like a bit more indie-ish than Paramore is, but yeah, I've heard Hey Monday, they're quite good. And there's Tonight Alive, I also quite yes. like Tonight Alive, like yeah. really good um, uh, female band there. There's Hot Milk, is one I've listened to recently. Yeah, yeah I like Hot Milk. It's like, you know, again, really cool band. Um, uh, like there's, uh, for the metal fans out there, one of us like Minerva, they do a great cover of um, uh, Through the Fire and the Flames by Dragon Force. Oh, so go listen to that one. Like female led singer fucking just nailing that song. Bring it back to like orchestras. This was such like, you know, a universally observed phenomenon in orchestras that eventually everyone was like, come the fuck on. It's so obvious that you are just like, you know, dismissing women outright. We need to bring in blind auditions. And when I'm saying blind audition, what, what pops into your head, Nisha? Um, well, now that you, you kind of described mm -hmm. at the beginning, you described it at the beginning of the yep. video, so now I have that in my head, but I also have like an image of these judges wearing blindfolds. Yeah, or oh, the voice. Yeah, got that like one, yeah. It, yeah. And it's basically that, it's where the judges are not allowed to see the person on stage. And usually what they do, they put a big curtain up in front of the stage, and the judges have to sit behind the curtain, the person walks on, you know, plays the, the piece um, that they've been asked to. And then if they get asked a question, this is the funniest part. If they get asked a question, they have to answer like a fucking horse by stomping once for yes, two for no. Oh God, like, because I think if the, judge hears their <laughs> yeah, if the judge hears their voice and they hear it's a woman, yeah. they might just dismiss them because they're a woman. And again, if anyone's like, well, that wouldn't happen. Fuck you. It happens every fucking day. Honestly, I thought, like a horse. Like, nay? <laughs> nay? <laughs> Yay? And if you didn't think, that, you know, the men making these decisions could get any sadder, any more pathetic. The women who take part in these blind auditions have been told by other women, when you go on stage, don't wear shoes. Do you want to guess why? Well, I'm going to guess if they wear, like, high heels or something, they'd hear the, the clickety-clack yep. of the heels. It is exactly oh. that, yeah. Not, not even high heels, even, like, you know, kitten heels or just, you know, a raised heel or something like that. Um, uh, and it's been noted and observed. Um, by you now women taking part in these blind auditions that you will see the judges listen out for the telltale clickety-clack of a woman's heel and then find an excuse not to hire that person. That's how deeply, in, that's it, that's how deeply ingrained this is. It reminds me a little bit of when I did an article today I found out on why there are not more female pilots. You think, why are there not more female pilots? And a Cliff Notes version of that is, uh, one, um, it's not presented as an option for a lot of young girls. They don't see it as an option, so they never think to like, you know, work towards it too. Getting a commercial flying license is very difficult and very expensive unless you have military experience because people who fly planes in the military can like, you know, transition into the um, commercial sector quite easily. The problem is, is that for many years, women couldn't fly jet planes in the army or the air force, I should say. Yeah. So that, you know, that entire way of getting into the field was like completely um, uh, like walled off to them. And then the other one 
um, is that so just there's so many dinosaurs there that even when they do manage to you know, make it all the way up to becoming a pilot, just men won't um, fly with them. And there's a story told by a female pilot I found where she has said on multiple occasions, she'll go when the pilots give you know, the, um, the spiel at the beginning of, hi, I'm your pilot, so-and-so, I'm going to be flying at this speed to this location, wind speed is this, wind speed is that, um, I hope you have a nice flight, I'll be giving you updates throughout um, to let you know how things are going. Uh, they've reported that several men on the plane will stand up and get off because they don't want to be flown there by a woman. Oh my god. Yeah, I know someone who works in a male-dominated industry and mm -hmm. she said, like, they don't really have many toilets for women. It's just like one toilet for her yep. and then the rest is loads for men. And so I just, that's, that just shows they don't expect women to work there. Yeah, it's um, our mutual friend I mentioned earlier who had that amazing quote. Um, they work, again, in a very male-dominated industry and they need to wear PPE. And they say that none of the PPE fits them because it's all designed for the average man. And they are you know, quite a short woman, I think like what, five foot tall are they? And yeah. there is literally not PPE that they can wear for their job because they never anticipated that you know, a woman of their stature would do the job. Or even like, you know, I guess a man who's that short. Yeah. And they have to wear like ill-fitting PPE, which is a bad thing yeah. when you want to PPE. And that's like fucking super it's illegal. It's like the safety wear, yeah, like it needs to fit right. Yeah, and they have to like special order stuff in, I think for like, a I don't know where they got it from. That's a special order stuff in so they could do their job because they never anticipated a woman would be doing it. And it's just, it's just real bad. It's real sad. <sighs> Especially in like, what, 2022 now? Mm -hmm. I'm forgetting what year we're in. But yeah, I sometimes forget what year I'm in because of this stuff that's still ongoing. It's yeah. like, come on. <sighs> yeah, just reminds me of um, a message I saw. Fittingly enough, scrawled on a bathroom wall when I was going for a piss a couple of weeks ago. And it's like, just said, men... You are basically all awful, do better. <laughs> and scroll beneath it in permanent marker was simply the word, no. <laughs> so nearby Nisha, today's video has been sponsored by our frequent channel contributor, John, AKA the wall man. And he sent through this. I'm very intrigued. I'm very intrigued as well. So apparently this is the poster people will get if they order or have ordered the ladies choice card game that's been mentioned on the channel a few times before. copy which we have do you mind grabbing the one from behind you it's on top of the uh oh. the cupboard there so we'll wait for you to get back so we can show that off as well i'd say throw it but like the top might fall off so oh no a woman's on camera oh god oh, the, men, the no. men are already typing oh no <laughs> so this is this is like you know ladies choice says carl's copy on it and it's even got a spelling mistake in it so mine like gonna be valuable and he's, i have a couple of very clear instructions from john that i'm going to read through now the criteria are all here in this email thread. Thanks, John. Um, so, he's gonna pay us $500 on the choice of our video on any article. Hell yeah, let's go. So that's $125 for each member of the channel. So cheers for that. Uh, these are the requirements I've sent you. So show the express envelope at the beginning of the video, which we did. Quote the number of games um, with the poster still available for sale by clicking this link, which I'll do now. And we have 132 copies still available for sale at the time of recording this. Um, and then the next part is open it at the end of the video and react to the included poster, show it to the audience. I guess we should do that now. So there's a poster in here. Excited. Pull to open. I can't like turn it around because like all of like John's and my details on the back. So let's try and do that, shall we? Ooh, so there's, an, oh, there's another copy of the game in here. Ooh. Ooh, it's a special version. It's different size. Oh, wow. What's this one? It's a long version. Long version. You know what? That's the one he says on the back. This is what you impress the ladies with. It's like, guys, like, what have you got? Have you got girth or have you got length? And then we have the poster here. So I'm going to, I think this is the back. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to open it and show you, Nisha, and then you can react. Okay. <laughs> so, so what, do, what, what is it? It's clearly you in bed with someone. <laughs> yeah. Carl sitting there with Richard Branson in bed, staring at a picture of Rashid, thinking of what could have been. <laughs> oh, this is when we played the game. Oh, so he got the artist to make that. <laughs> so that's from uh, the playthrough we did, I think a year ago now, didn't we? We played through the game, and like he's like, John will, uh, Jim will paint it, and he's got the artist who works on things, just make. A, so I guess if you want to get a, this painting of me in bed with Richard Branson. Just staring at Rashid. <laughs> the tattoo gave it away. I was like, oh, that's obviously you. Yeah, the, the tattoo gives it away. Not like the build. Because like, let's be honest, like, I've not got that build right now, folks. I guess I've got to hang that up somewhere in the office now. I'll we'll put it on top of the skeleton for now, I suppose. There we go, Mr. Skelly. And what are the rest of the criteria had here? So, 
In the description, include this link, which whoever edits this will do indeed. Da, da, da. Also include the things they can watch, you know, the origins of that if they like. Or maybe we can just put a clip in of, like, you know, us doing it, the link's there. Carl's sitting there with Richard Branson in bed, just <laughs> staring at a picture of Rashid thinking about walking a bin. Just like the Wolverine meme. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Just Wolverine looking at Akuma's <laughs> assist. He's like, oh, no. Um, he says here that everyone waiting on a copy with the poster should receive it late August. Um, so that's around the time this video should go out if all things go well. Mm -hmm. um, in the original print run, the ones without the poster, I've already had to send out three replacements from the post office lost. Um, oh, so yeah, he's going to send out three replacements with full tracking for copies that don't arrive by October. Normally they travel untracked. If anyone else is still waiting on a copy of the original print run, email um, john at choicegames.com.au, um, a link to which you can also find below. And it says here that finally, Kickstarter backers who do not give me their address within one week of this video going live will have their pledge refunded to them. Any Kickstarter creator who says backers need to reach out for a refund is lying. The refund button exists, and I don't need anyone's permission to click it. Just fail to give me your address, and your money comes back. No contact necessary. So that's like nice of John's there to do, you know, some fact themed how not to do business, revealing that some people on Kickstarter are just straight up fucking lying about they're not do refunds. And it says, kind regards, Wall and I like that John has now just taken on the mantle of the Wall Man. man. <laughs> wall <laughs> Man. He's like, signs off now, it's the Wall Man. Yeah, I think he's put his, like, his like, social handles with Wall Man. Because when he emails me, it just says, like, wall, like John Wallman at whatever.com. It's great. Oh, I love that, though. What's that? <laughs> the thing is, that, how am I going to explain that to people when they come into my house? 